Everyone out there, it seems, both in the alternative and the mainstream health community, is pushing some type of diet or fad or drug or herb that's supposed to make you healthy. Personally, I'm a little skeptical of all of these because none of them really have an enormous amount of data associated with them to prove their effectiveness and their safety. Whereas a traditional diet has an enormous amount of data associated with it. Traditional diets are developed collectively by hundreds of thousands of people over the course of thousands of years. No other fad can have that much data. So a traditional diet is far more scientific than anything else being pushed by the health community. And yet we throw out all of that data and we follow the advice of people who are driven by profit who don't have good data to back up their claims. Luckily, it's not that difficult to return to a traditional diet and it doesn't involve pouring through the ingredients of every processed food you buy trying to remove this and that uh, artificial additive. All you have to do is make some simple additions and subtractions from your existing diet. Now I did a video in the past about the two main things that are missing in modern diets which are antioxidants and omega-3 fatty acids. So in this video I'll cover about half a dozen things which have been added to the modern diet which were not really in our traditional diets. First one of these would be sugar. We eat an enormous amount of sugar in our modern diet and very few of us had ancestors eating this amount of sugar unless maybe your ancestors were from the tropics and they ate a lot of tropical fruit. And even fructose in association with fruit has other healthy cofactors like enzymes and antioxidants and vitamins. But most of our ancestors ate nowhere near as much sugar as we eat. Probably the only straight sweetener that our ancestors ever ate was raw honey, which by the way is higher in antioxidants and enzymes than practically any other food. So it's pretty simple to return to a natural diet. You just replace all of the high quantity of sweeteners that you use today with a much lower quantity of raw honey. That's not a difficult change to make, and you'll be back to a traditional balance of uh, simple carbohydrates in your diet, and you'll be getting simple carbohydrates in the healthiest form. Another enormous part of our diet today is white flour, and yes, humans, some people have been eating white flour for many generations, probably not in the highly pulverized, oxidized state that it's in today, but many of our ancestors weren't eating this until only a generation or two ago, if you're from North Europe, Native American, for example. And wheat contains gluten, which is not a natural substance for humans to eat. Some people can handle more gluten than others, but often the effects of gluten are very subtle. You don't notice it right away, or it may take years to accumulate. So if you remove this from your diet, you'll be back to a much more natural traditional diet. And it's not that difficult to reduce or remove wheat from your diet. The easiest thing to do is probably what our ancestors did. Get most of your complex carbohydrates from root vegetables, things like potatoes, parsnips, taro. These are high in antioxidants and they don't have the problem of gluten. You can also switch from wheat to other grains, although grains themselves are not really a part of the human diet for that long compared to root vegetables. Um, but at least other grains don't have the high gluten that wheat has. Even if you like the convenience of bread, there are breads made from other grains that don't have gluten. You can learn to make these breads yourself. I generally don't like to buy them from the store because they never taste fresh in the store. They've usually been sitting on the shelf in a, some health food store for a long time. And this brings me to the next important thing that's missing in our diet today, which is fresh food. Surprisingly, there's not a full scientific understanding of what fresh food is. If there was a good understanding of it, then we'd be able to duplicate the process and make artificially fresh tasting food. But one thing's for certain, it's a very important issue, otherwise we wouldn't have evolved to be able to sense this difference. People so strongly favor fresh food because our body evolved to naturally seek out the healthiest form of food. And again, it's not something that we're getting a lot of in our modern diet, especially in these health food stores where things sit on the shelves for months at a time before they're sold. It's also not a difficult switch to make. You can buy food at a farmer's market where it's fresh. You can grow your own fruits and vegetables, which are much fresher than anything else you're going to get. And when you cook at home, you're preparing much fresher food than buying pre-processed food. Not difficult changes to make, but very important, and it'll, again, get you back to a traditional way of eating. The next enormous unnatural part of our modern diet is all of the liquid vegetable oil that we eat and we fry everything in. We never had anything like this traditionally. Traditionally, the vegetable oils were olive oil and coconut oil, and we didn't fry a lot of food the way we do today. We didn't eat as much oil in general. And when people did fry, they often used something like a wok where water was added so that the oil didn't heat to as high a temperature and didn't have a tendency to form trans products as much. And olive oil and coconut oil anyway don't oxidize or form trans products as quickly as the other vegetable oils that we eat today. 
So it's a pretty simple substitution to make, just to remove all of the unnatural oils, particularly canola, soy, the extremely unnatural oils that we never ate, and substitute instead olive oil, coconut oil, and just don't eat as much because we never ate this much vegetable oil traditionally. And most importantly, remove all of the hydrogenated oil because this is just an extreme form of the problems that are caused by the other liquid oils. It causes oxidative stress, which is linked to heart disease and potentially to neurological damage. Next, I'll briefly mention the high quantities of dairy as a potentially unnatural substance in our modern diet. Some people ethnically did eat an enormous amount of dairy traditionally, but unless you're from Northern Europe or Central Asia, you probably didn't eat as much dairy and casein as we eat today, and some people uh, Asians and Native Americans didn't eat any. Milk has lactose and casein, which are molecules we're not fully evolved to handle. Even people whose ancestors have been eating milk for thousands of years can't fully handle casein. And just like gluten, it's something that has a very subtle effect and gradually builds up in the body. So if you at least reduce the amount of milk that you're eating, uh, eat milk in more natural forms, uh, not the powdered, reconstituted milk that they sell today, not the homogenized milk that they sell today, but either raw milk or some type of cultured milk or a cultured goat's milk product, then you'll be eating a more natural form. And if you reduce the amount, you'll be eating probably closer to what most of our ancestors ate. Next is the enormous amount of overcooked food which we have in our modern diet. For one thing, we've only been cooking food for a small percentage of human evolution. And traditional cultures which cooked food at least made sure that they didn't overcook it the way we do today. Other items like fish were usually fermented or pickled rather than being cooked, and uh, vegetables also, very often cultured rather than being cooked. Cooking denatures proteins, oxidizes fats, causes the formation of malleard particles and other potential toxins, but it also makes nutrients more bioavailable, so it's kind of a trade-off. And the only thing you can really do is look at what traditional cultures did. What did they decide was best? Which is usually some type of light cooking for many sorts of foods and no cooking for other foods. But rarely, if ever, will you find a culture which overcooked everything the way we do today. And lastly, organic food versus factory farming. I've covered this in a lot of videos in the past. It's covered by many other people in detail. Kind of a lengthy topic, but basically, Traditional practices are more or less embodied by organic produce and, and meat, whereas factory farming employs a lot of extremely unnatural processes. So by simply making the switch from eating factory farmed produce and meat to organic produce, and especially organic meat, I feel is particularly important. Uh, in that way you can make the switch back to a traditional diet. Now a lot of people probably haven't even stuck around in the video to this point, and even if you have, you're probably thinking, yeah, that's a nice idea, but you won't do it. You can never really understand the full benefits of making a change to a natural diet until you do it. And it's not just making one or two little changes, it's you know, making the full change back to some semblance of a natural diet. If you make the changes in this video, you'll be well on your way to a natural diet and it's not impossible to do. I was reading a book a while ago by some famous actor who had done a lot of things in his life, but he said that the number one biggest adventure in his life was to change back to a natural diet. And I have to agree, I've done a lot in my life as well, but nothing was as life-altering as a change back to a natural diet. Your food physically makes you who you are, and there are a lot of things we still don't understand about this process. We just have to rely on the enormous amount of empirical data developed by our ancestors and passed on to us in the form of traditional diets. When people make the change back to a traditional diet, they almost always say they had incredible benefits which they never imagined. Aches and pains go away, headaches go away, they don't get several colds a year anymore. People think these things are normal and later they find out that they're due to the unnatural foods that we eat. And even more importantly, many people report a greater sense of mental clarity. So again, in my opinion, one of the most important things you can do and one of the biggest adventures you can have is improving yourself by improving your diet.